Hi, I'm Marie Bauer with CSIS Southeast Asia Program, and I'm, I'm very pleased to have Sydney Jones from the International Crisis Group uh, from Indonesia visiting us today. Sydney, welcome to Washington. Thank you. I'd like to ask a couple questions. Uh, Indonesia obviously has problems with homegrown terrorists. The bombings in Jakarta and Bali are evidence of that. Can you tell us how you think about this issue, and are there trends you can identify in terms of domestic terrorism and the government's progress? in addressing these issues? Yes, I think uh, the first thing to note is that it's not a huge issue. It's one that gets a lot of public attention, but I don't think it's something that most Indonesians worry about night and day. I think that there are there have been major strides made in identifying some of the networks. The problem is that the ideology of what we call Salafi jihadism has taken root in Indonesia. So it's not easy to eradicate. But we're not seeing a huge drive for recruitment. And we are seeing some community pushback. So I would say it's a containable problem, but it's not going to go away anytime soon. Okay. Um, well, the U.S.-Indonesian relationship is one the Obama administration hopes to elevate and even transform into a robust partnership. What are your views on the potential to enhance that relationship, particularly in the areas of military-to-military -military cooperation and counterterrorism cooperation? On counterterrorism cooperation, there's no question but that the relationship is already close, and I think it will only continue to grow closer. The FBI is working very closely with the Indonesian police. There's been a lot of assistance in terms of training. I think there are a lot of people going to the United States for uh, enhanced skill training and so on. So all of that is to the good. In terms of the military-to-military -military relationship, there's some outstanding problems. And I think uh, one of the problems is a difference in views, uh, particularly between the U.S. Congress and the Indonesians on the amount of accountability that can take place for past abuses. Frankly, I think no matter how hard the United States pushes, there is not going to be prosecutions for past abuses. I think there's too much resistance to that in the military and too much concern of not wanting to be seen to be pushed around by the United States. I think there is uh, there is leverage that the United States could exert on moving forward with better accountability in the future, but only if you have a fully restored military relationship to start with. So, can I follow up on that? I mean, so is, the, is it of enough value to push ahead and um, go ahead and, and reopen those ties if, we, if we're not going to get uh, the sort of retroactive... Uh, satisfaction that Congress, Congressman Leahy, or Senator Leahy and others want to see? I think it's, it's, it's probably an important enough relationship to move forward, but it's ultimately a, a decision that the Indonesian government and the U.S. have to agree to, and I don't think all of the interventions by non-governmental organizations are going to make much of a difference in that. I think there's I think there are a lot of people looking at Indonesia geostrategically who say, how can we not have a full military-to-military -military relationship? Right. Um, recently, the Indonesian counterterrorism forces killed several terrorists and uncovered plans for attacks um, in, in various places, including Singapore. Um, how current is that threat now? I'm not sure that the, the threat to Singapore was more than just a, a document found, and I don't, I, I'm not sure there's any, uh, there's any real substance to that. But I think that there is no question that some of the terrorists arrested in Indonesia had international linkages. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things we need to know a lot more about is the exact nature of those linkages. One person now on trial in Jakarta was in regular communication, for example, with al-Qaeda in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. He wasn't part of this group that was arrested in Aceh, but I think part of the difficulty in understanding these networks in Indonesia is to know that it's not just one group. We've got lots of different groups, all small, all fringes of fringes of fringes, but all interested in continuing the jihad. Thank you. Um, your group, the International Crisis Group, looks at areas of crisis and conflict in Southeast Asia. What are the areas of most concern to you now, and how would you prioritize these for U.S. policymakers working on the region? 
I think anybody looking at Southeast Asia today right. would see Thailand as the biggest problem that they're they're facing. And I think if you look in comparison to Thailand, the Philippines, even Malaysia, Indonesia looks like a rock of stability. It does. Thank you very much, Sydney Jones. We appreciate your taking time with us. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>